Hi, my name's Mike Carlina, and I'm going to tell you about Think Studio. Think Studio is a UI editor and server for the Internet of Things. If you can make an HTML-based template, you can make real-time dynamic UIs for the Internet of Things. Unlike the majority of cloud platforms for the Internet of Things, Think Studio does not require you to send your data into a proprietary platform. Your data stays within your network, and we just provide the UIs that you design. You get the convenience of a cloud-based service for the complex task of designing and managing UIs and the privacy, speed and low latency of your own network handling your data. We'll go more into Think Studio and how it works and its place in the ecosystem of the Internet of Things in a moment. But right now, let's go to a simple demo. Think Studio has two modes, viewer mode and studio mode. You're looking at viewer mode at the moment and it's what you normally use if you're actually using your UI and typically on a mobile device which is why it's styled up like this. We're going to go to studio mode so that you can see the code that we're writing at the same time as actually seeing the UI. Here we are. This is basically the, the hello world of Thing Studio. On the right hand side you can see the HTML code and on the left hand side you can see the live rendered UI. And what we've got here is just a standard HTML button with the small addition of two attributes, data feed and data message. And those are what tell Think Studio what to send out into the Internet of Things. If I press the bell, it rings my doorbell. Now let's see how we view data coming in from the Internet of Things. Here we have a straightforward text box and it has a value which is set by a handlebars template here. You can read all about handlebars on the Meteor website and, and a variety of other places where it's also known as moustache. If you look what we're doing here, we have a helper which is called message, which gets the next message from the temperature feed. We'll explain about feeds in a moment. Just to prove that we're actually looking at live data, here's the thing itself that's sending this data. And if I put my fingers on the temperature sensor, it should, there we go, start going up. And if I take my finger away, it cools down again. So we've got real live data in the middle of an editing session. Also, yeah. we're editing at the same time as we're getting live data in. So if I put in a random string, it will appear. Or if I put in, say, another button, That will also appear. So we've, on one screen, got both live data coming in from the internet, and also we've got the ability to edit and create new controls as we go along. OK, we'll now take a short break from demo mode and talk about Think Studio in the wider context of the Internet of Things. There are already quite a few IoT cloud services in existence. They broadly look like the diagram on the screen at the moment. You have your set of things wherever they're deployed. You send data into their network where they may store it, they may do other stuff with it, and they give you user interfaces and charting maybe, and then they send it back to you. And in our minds, this has got some fundamental weaknesses. One of those is simply that there's a security issue. Even the biggest firms do have security leaks, and they've got your data there. Another one is privacy. We're all very sensitive about that nowadays. And you're sending all your personal data, really, about what you're doing, say, in the house or in your business into a third party. Um, you've also got latency uh, and scaling issues simply because you're sending all of your data on a long round trip possibly across the Atlantic, uh, or at least into another hosting center, uh, before you get a response on your UI. And very often, you've got proprietary data transports as well, and you've got some kind of lock-in. In our minds, this is just cause for a different approach. With Thing Studio, we made a fundamental decision that we weren't going to touch any of the network traffic between you and your things. To that end, we suggest that you use MQTT as your network transport, which is an open standards protocol. 
and you implement that either within your own network or you get yourself a cloud service. We'll tell, talk a bit about which cloud services and implementations you can get in a second. But that's a fundamental decision that we made. The role of Think Studio is merely to give you the editing and development facilities for UI and the ability to store them and bring them back when you need them. So you are as secure and private as you choose to be. You can have the entire uh, MQTT network within your home network and never let anything out. You can port forward. You can use another party to provide you with MQTT services. Uh, it's your choice. You also get some good characteristics out of this architecture. You get really fast turnaround because potentially you're only a few meters round trip uh, between your UI and your things. And again, you're nice and secure and private from us. We promise never ever to touch any of your data. Now, I just used a term without defining it, which is MQTT. So let's just quickly, very quickly, go over what MQTT is. It's communications mechanism for machine-to-machine -machine communications. Uh, that means between the Internet of Things and other Internet of Things, or UIs, or other computers. It is a publish-subscribe mechanism, which is, the best way to describe, is a bit like a bulletin board or a forum. Instead of sending a message from one place to the other, you send a message into a topic and anybody subscribed or any machine subscribed to that topic will receive the message which is a great way of decoupling the two ends so they don't have to know so much about each other. It's open source and it's uh, OASIS standardized and if you want to find out more about MQTT go over to mqtt.org. There are also an awful lot of implementations and services around MQTT. Uh, there's a bunch of open source brokers like Mosquito and Paho and Mosca and many more. Uh, there are client libraries for Linux, the Arduino, this great new ESP8266 chip, the Spark Core, and many more. I, I don't have space or time to list all of this. And you can get third-party services from people like Hive or CloudMQTT if you don't want to host your own brokers. But you can also put brokers onto very, very small platforms. Uh, here we run MQTT actually on a router platform using OpenWRT, so it can go on to appliance-sized platforms. Okay, back to demos. Let's have a look here. I've got my cute little Spark Core, which is running an MQTT client, and I've got a UI up on the screen, which is subscribed to a topic called SparkPod. There's a potentiometer down here, which is emits messages when uh, I twist the, the pot. So let's just see how responsive this is. And as you can see, it's completely quick, very fine-tuned kind of response. And that shows you the kind of uh, latencies you can get when you're running on your own network. Now let's reverse the process and see this the other way around. Here we have uh, a different thing. This is an ESP8266 very new, very fashionable, and that's linked up to a servo, and in this case, the UI, we've got a slider. Once again, we've got the slider emitting servo slider events to uh, the MQTT, and if I move the slider, you'll see a nice, quick response back from uh, the servo. So that shows us two-way communication, both ways, low latency, private, and uh, entirely scalable. Right, uh, here we have the obligatory kitchen sink demo. And that's showing you a range of controls that we have pre-styled for you uh, for mainly mobile use uh, for showing uh, nice readouts and controls. And you can also see that we've got a little bit more stylish, as it were, on the layouts of our, uh, our, uh, our UI here. And you can keep going and going and going. So um, we're actually giving a good head start. But, of course, you are at liberty to put in any controls you want and style them any way you want them as well. 
Finally, I'm going to show you a, a quick run through of setting yourself up on our demo system so you can uh, get right to it when you've viewed this video and uh, try it for yourself. Uh, the first thing you do when you, uh, you come on and register, and I won't go through that bit, I think you can probably manage it, is set yourself up a connection. We've pre-set up the connection screen uh, with a, uh, a, an account on an open MQTT server that we've provided, uh, but it really you should, it's best to do your own. It will need to have WebSocket support on it. Uh, most of the current MQTT brokers do. Uh, the one to note is Mosquito. You will need the 1.4 release of Mosquito if you want WebSockets. It's just come out. Very good. Next thing is to define some feeds. Here's a list of some of the feeds I'm using at the moment. Uh, it's pretty easy to add a new feed. You give it a name and you put in your topic subscription string and that will be something like the ones you see here like doorbell or sparkpot or servo pos and it can also have wildcards in it which we'll talk about another time but just easy enough to put in a feed uh, that will be emitted by your things and then we come to screens and you've seen that already but if you want to add a new one you just press the add new screen button give it a name and then start editing after that and finally, and not completely implemented at the moment, we are putting themes in which will be blocks of CSS that you can attach to your screens so that you can style them any way you want and give them a different look and feel. Okay, well, I think that's it for the moment. Roll credits. Um, we have a brochure website at www.thingsdido.com we have a demo site where you can create your own UIs at demo.thingsstudio. There's a forum. You can contact us by mail. Paul and I are on Twitter. And very finally, I would like to have a big thank you to the guys out at meteor.com who created the underlying platform we use for this.